Stracker Solar, based in Ashland, was founded on a desire to keep the land occupied by solar generators open to other uses. Started in the solar industry back in 1976 with my dad. We put bread box water heaters on roofs in the San Joaquin Valley. We started Stracker in 2016 after working in California under their Proposition 39 program to help Northern California schools start renewable energy programs. We were installing a six Stracker installation down in Granada Elementary in Northern California using dual access trackers from all earth renewables and we were really impressed that we were actually seeing 70% greater energy gain using the same panels. At the same time, we saw that we were having to fence off large areas of the school grounds to be able to do these installations. And that's when the light bulb came on that, you know, if we can pull mount these things and make them robust enough, we won't need fencing below and we can maintain these playing fields down below. So we started designing and testing a pole mounted structure here locally at Oak Street Tank and Steel and developed what's now become the Stracker system. It is becoming the premier elevated dual axis tracking system in the country. Strackers are the most efficient solar harvesters available anywhere right now. They produce 50 to 70 percent more energy than fixed arrays and they open up a whole new array of installation areas that were otherwise previously unopened to solar. You know, for instance, you, you see your current solar farm installations, massive expanses of solar farms, just all these fences and you can't access anything. The Oregonian in me, you know, I'm like, man, what, what about the animals? You know, what about how the animal's going to get through or what about natural habitats or whatever? You have to protect it from other people, which means fencing. Well, when you have a solar panel 20 feet in the air with no access to it, unless you have a bucket truck, you forego the need for fencing. There's no safety hazards or anything really to concern yourself with the fence about. You're not disturbing natural habitat. The animals that are native to the area still have free access to do whatever they need to do, go where they need to go. And uh, you have this massive energy production monster over your head. These are being installed in this parking lot and you have a 650 square foot solar array above your head, but you only have a three square foot footprint that's being taken up from our foundation. The utility solar market has set the bar for what is the best way to generate electricity? What is the most cost effective way to do that? Originally, those large fields of solar panels that you saw 20 years ago were fixed mount solar. And that has given way over the last 20 years to single axis tracking because they could get 30%, up to 40% more power than the fixed panels. So as fixed solar transitioned to single axis tracking, so shall single axis tracking evolve into dual axis tracking. We maximize the amount of solar that can be gotten out of any particular solar panel. And by doing that, we reduce the number of panels we need to produce and the waste associated with those panels 30 years down the road. Dual axis trackers tried to compete with single axis trackers back in the 70s when utility solar was starting to take root. Because it was a race to the bottom for the cheapest way to get things in the ground, corners were cut and dual axis trackers earned a poor reputation in the industry. What we've done with strackers is just in the last few years, the material strengths, the manufacturing tolerances, and the control systems have finally got to a place where we can put a robust tracker that we know will be able to handle 120 mile an hour winds on the top of a 20 foot pole. Pretty multi-purpose shop right here. Their primary purpose is doing steel tanks and whatnot, but we have partnered with them for the last six or seven years. These are some components right here. These are our, our axle tubes, which is uh, basically like the main structural component that holds the rest of our arrays above it. These guys rotate to follow the sun. We got these guys welding up drive cores right here right now. Uh, this is basically step one in the fabrication process. After we get our material, they obviously need to fabricate it, and then we have to get it sent off to get painted just so it can withstand the test of time. We use American-made steel, which is really strong, but as you know, steel rusts, so we got to make sure it's protected from the elements all the time. This is just some more raw steel right here. It's going to be our Stracker main beams, the C-beams that are, again, holding our array. What you're looking at right here is what that gentleman over there is actually welding. It's your piece that gives everything movement. It's probably our ugliest Stracker, just because 
these are our prototypes and stuff, and we have some extra gear attached to that one so we can actually monitor it as it goes, but um, you still get the basic idea of what they look like when they're moving, you know? In the morning, as the sun's rising, the striker tilts and turns to face the exact spot that the sun is rising. And then throughout the day, by rotating on its two axes, both its tilt and its azimuth, it follows and keeps its entire solar array perpendicular to the sun. So it's getting the, the absolute most power it can get all day long. Each unit has a, a GPS antenna and a GPS card in it so it knows where it's at. Using that in conjunction with a special program that's actually written by the government as far as tracking the sun goes, knows exactly where the sun's gonna be out throughout the day and every seven minutes it corrects itself so it's perfectly perpendicular with the sun. And it's guaranteed to be within 0.1 degrees of the sun at all time throughout the day until it goes to bed at night. When it goes to bed at night, that's when it, it goes into its stow position again? Yeah, so our systems know when sunrise is and when sunset is. So when the sun comes up in the morning, they're going to be flat. But then when that sun comes up, it wakes up and meets the sun first thing in the morning, follows it throughout the day, and then once it's down past the horizon, it once again goes flat and orients itself in proper stow position for the evening. All of our installs, we keep uh, stow switches on our unit so that for whatever reason, they need to get underneath it or need the clearance. They have the ability to actually put our units in a flat stow mode. Push it and wait a couple seconds and then she starts moving. It's not a fast process. I mean, obviously when you're dealing with this much weight, you have really high torque or high ratioed motors. So it's like 280 to one as far as the, the gearing and the slews go, but it makes for a nice, smooth, efficient movement that's pretty much impervious to the influences of wind or whatever outside forces don't want it to move. Very reliable. Super low maintenance. We grease them once a year. They've been doing great. There's an anemometer on top of each unit. We have a program in them to where if the wind goes over a certain speed, we have them set at 25 miles an hour. It detects it and automatically goes flat. It won't raise again until it's uh, detected 30 minutes without a high speed wind gust. So try to build a little bit of uh, safety into the systems just because you, know, you don't want to spend a bunch of money on a solar array and have your investment get ruined by the weather. So you're going to put something on the weather, it's got to withstand it. Um, the arrays themselves are about 28 foot wide by 24 foot tall. We have up to 15 kilowatts worth of solar panels we can put on that. These are the Zshine Solar 450 bifacial panels. Um, we're actually putting these on a job right now. We've got to come and pick this box up a little bit later. I'd open it more, but it's just going to make it harder for us in transportation. We do have an active job site going, and if you guys would like, you're more than welcome to follow me on over. and watch me tell people what to do. Yeah, by all means, let's go. Well, we're pretty excited about our local clients. We have TC Chevy that was our first retail dealership installation, car dealership. Franz Bakery is using us for their a distribution center, intend to use us elsewhere. We have Ashland Family Dentistry and Colin Beck Enterprises that have turned their systems into net zero medical offices. Yes, I'm a dentist here in town, and we built these in 2020 to power the office. In 2010, we decided to look into solar, but we couldn't ever make enough power to power that building. It burns about 5,800 kilowatts a month. So there was no technology at the time. Stracker meets that need. So here we are. Is a dentist office like more power demanding than other types of businesses? Uh, well, we have two servers and 40 computers, so yes. And we have a lot of pumps and compressors, so they use a lot of power. So this is, uh, we call it the Service Center 6. This is for the city of Ashland. Uh, we were awarded a, uh, a grant um, earlier last year to get this all done. This project is going to showcase six of our strackers right here in this parking lot. With the addition of a massive battery backup system and two level three EVCS units, electric vehicle charging stations, Level three, it's good as you can get, you know, just so I have a Tesla supercharger, you know, it's a 120 kilowatt charging system. So it's going to be a very, a big showcase project, you know, for the city of Ashland. So what are we looking at here? So we call this flying the array. So down on the ground, on the racks, we work and wire up all the modules, connect everything, make sure it's all working properly, and then we set the poles, get those level, bolt, tighten down, and then we pick up the whole array, bolt it to the top, 
Big stages will hook up the wires at the top of the pole. We already have our underground wiring in and commission that and, and then we're just set. Once we power up, she'll start flying. Fantastic. Start working. Nice. Is it a challenging process? Uh, we're getting it down. We're getting it down. It's, it's fun. <laughs> Jeff's a good friend of ours, um, and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll put some strikers in some of our projects as well for, for projects where you don't have the ability to put ground mount. His system is very, very good. It's just a matter of trying to make sure that the pricing and cost-benefit analysis for the users is really there. What you don't want to do is having a system that costs so much money that people never see their payback. I paid 110,000 for them, so 55,000 each, which is 26 kilowatts of power, and they will be paid off essentially in five years of the payback with the tax credits. Tracker is easily one of the uh, important area in solar PV implementation. Tracker is expensive, but I think just like with any other technology, uh, once it's uh, fully developed, then they are, there will be mass produced, then uh, it will make economic sense. It's a big nut. If everything's good in the supply chain and we don't, we're not backed up on other projects, don't have anything to wait for, realistically, from the time we get an order to the time we can have it all manufactured, you're looking at about a month from order to manufacturing. And then once we get out here, uh, you know, if there's one striker, we're in and out in two days, like completely. You know, it depends and it, it looks like we're about to be extremely backlogged with manufacturing, so. Have new orders for this stuff ramped up? Yes, and we have a lot of big things in the works. Don't want to count our chickens before the eggs have hatched, you know, but uh, yes, orders have picked up. We have another six pack going up here in Ashland here in mid-December. So the pace is definitely picked up and with what we have on the horizon, it's gonna be very crazy. And we're pretty excited about the national expansion that we're in right now. We've got some large installations planned for microprocessor chip up in the Portland area. Some tribal installations lined out. We're talking to some large mega churches back east that have acres of parking lots they'd like to cover, and several of the universities from Southern California all the way to Minnesota. Well, I think Strecker is totally cool. You know, they are, they're taking a different approach in terms of their installations. Strecker is going to make an imprint regionally and um, probably across the country. But I track their success just by looking at the number of Strecker poles that I see around the community. What I mostly hope is that Strecker stays in Southern Oregon as they expand and go off to the rest of the world. Well, Jeff seemed like a, a very Ashland guy, Yeah. so I, I hope he stays around too. Some of the core technologies, the actuators and the control systems, I think will still be produced here in Southern Oregon, but we will be fabricating the bulk of the steel structure, the poles, the frames, the rails, in shops that are local to where the installation's going. And by doing that, we bring a measure of economic development, community development to each of the communities that we serve. Our apprenticeship programs are gonna be a big piece of everything that we do. And we're really working and, and committed to provide living wage jobs for all of our employees and associates. How many people across all of your activity do you think you employ? We have about 10 people here locally, and we have subcontractors all over the place. The potential for this, um, just once word gets out to the appropriate places, it's, it's industry upsetting potential. You know, it's a very, very amazing product. I, I believe in it 100%.